Ladies and gentlemen, fellow citizens, this is Stoda Leprechaun again with you today. And today we're going to be taking a little bit more in-depth look at the Origin 600i. And in this video we'll be kind of doing it backwards from the first one. We'll be taking a look at the exterior as it kind of rotates around for us here. And then we will head inside and take a bit of a closer look on the inside. Now we can just get this thing to rotate around properly for us here. I suppose I could rotate, so we're looking at it right side up. And yeah, this is uh, Origins. Uh, I suppose you could call it medium sized ship. It's supposed to be their answer to the RSI constellation. And, well, price excluded, considering Origins a luxury line, whereas RSI is more of a utilitarian. Uh, I actually really like this ship. It's got some fairly decent armament to it. Uh, you can't really see it right now because they're retracted. But behind that door there is one auto turret. You can kind of see the fancy interior through there. Um, coming around here, we've got one of the three size 5, I believe they're bearing M series, uh, guns. And then here we can see the eight of the 16 size 3 missiles it carries. At least I do believe they're size 3. one of the many maneuvering jets. I can't remember how many it's got exactly, but... Not a supremely nimble ship, but nimble enough for what she's for. Up at the front, you can... Well, if you can see through the intense glare, you can see the captain's quarters, and, uh... Well, for a moment there, you can see the cockpit area. Which honestly really does have a very good view. Really do quite like it. And yeah. Again, another one blah, another one of the muffins hard points. And here you can see a slightly better view of the interior there. And yeah, we'll uh, drift down to the bottom here. And I'm not a hundred percent, whoops, wrong way. Not a hundred percent sure where it is exactly. Uh, Somewhere down here, there is a secondary turret. Oh, I think that might be the door for it there. Yeah, there it is right there. And then you have the main cargo ramp. Oops, I keep hitting up instead of strafe down. <coughs> As you can see, it's well marked. And then you have the main entrance into the ship. And now we will see if we can catch the elevator here. Oh, there we are. Whoa! Try not to get hit by anything here. And unlike most, I like this one, because it actually has a gravity generator on the main pad. I'm assuming the cargo bay would have uh, magnetic lock plates for your cargo, but it has no gravity generator like this. But anyway, we will start off on the lower deck and work our way up. So 
So moving to the front, we have the aforementioned captain's quarters with uh, a couple of bottles of booze working as some bookends. And small uh, notebook and a pen with a small lamp. Some kind of console that you cannot use just yet. Hmm. Fortunately, that is one of the seats that does not work apparently. You also get a small couch. Hmm. I had it had a interact button working on this earlier today, but apparently it's no longer working. Oh well. Anywho, you get quite the decent view on the when you wake up in the morning here. If you're the captain, that is. Honestly, s really reminds me of the uh, uh, the Tempest from Mass Effect Andromeda with this little cabin here. Obviously, it's quite a bit smaller, but then again, this ship's also like half the length, if not more than half the length. Well, yeah, anyway, I'm not too sure what these little inserts here are for. Get a little bit of pretty ferns that are somehow growing out of the wall. But hey, I have seen things like that in Japan before, so... Anyway, uh, behind this hidden door, we have the captain's oh, vanity, I guess you would call this. And yeah, I mean, fairly decent. A little bit of storage space, sink. I don't know what the hell that is. Control panel for something there, I'm going to guess. A couple of coat hangers, shoe racks, towel rack, and possibly a towel dryer, I'm not 100% sure. And then back behind the second hidden door, we have the uh, actual bath. Very odd shower. Very odd. Personally, I would have rotated that about 180 degrees, but... Oh well. A small toilet. Oddly enough, no sink in here, but I suppose you have one right there, so you don't really need one in there. But anyway, heading out. Yeah, every time I come in this ship, I'm just amazed by the views you can get out of it. But anyhow, moving aft, we have the main elevator we used to come in. We'll also take you up to the second deck. Moving back here, we have the uh, rover and cargo bay. sure what these are for. I'm assuming they might be for cargo. Just because they do kind of look like the magnetic lock plates in most other cargo areas. And you'll see this repeated throughout the ship, but most of the time these pieces here that are going vertical usually run along the deck, like right where I'm standing. What's this? Oh, more hangers. All right, I'm assuming that must be for an EVA suit. Yeah, because there's one on each side, so they must be. But yeah, there, see, there you can see the uh, magnetic lock plate. All this gray stuff with the, almost looks like the Imperial design in the middle. And then to have that carried on up here just makes me that's for stacking cargo. So you can have some cargo or supplies off on the side and also have your buggy in the middle here. And then also you can look up to the top deck from the lower deck in here. Or some of the up 
upper deck and look down and see your cargo or rover. And uh, I think I got myself completely turned around here. Yeah, that's the front. All right, and right here we have a small panel controlling the cargo bay door. That is honestly the first time I've used this door and that sounds amazing. <laughs> Surfaces. And every time you come in there, you always find something new. But anyhow, moving farther aft, we have a secondary elevator that will also lift you up to the second deck. And then a small staircase that moves into the crew area where the rest of your crew or anybody's can crater if they have to log off and then there's these mysterious panels that I'm not sure if they're for crew storage which they very well could be or um, holding uh, components behind them which could also be the case. And then here we have uh, four escape pods for any crew that are down here that need to get out in a hurry. Also love the stone roof. I mean the textures they use in the ship, ooh, that kind of kills all the ambience. But yeah, no, it uh, just the, just the way they built this thing is just beautiful. Oh hey, there's another seat also doesn't work yet but anyway moving over here we have a small change room and uh, two bathrooms fortunately the doors still don't work small med station or well medical supply station I guess and yet more uh, crew storage I'd honestly never noticed that green strip up there before. Again, like I said, every time you come in these things, you always wind up finding something new. Nice little, I don't know if you can call that a bench or not. Kind of looks like one. But anyway, heading out of here and heading up the elevator to the second deck or the top deck alright from here we will simply just move from aft to four uh, we'll check that out later alright so back here we've got basically the business end of the ship uh, I'm not 100% sure if this is the touring model or the exploration model. I'm assuming the exploration model from the uh, cargo bay, but uh, or rover bay. But anyhow, down up here you've got a fully stocked bar, a couple of shot glasses. So I hope you don't plan on having more than two people drinking. Uh, uh, ventilation and some kind of jelly beans. Not a hundred percent sure what that is. And then yeah, up here you got some seating. Oh hey, found a seat that actually works. Not the greatest view from this one, mind you. Well, I guess you can kind of look up. But yeah, sit there and play some solitaire on your time off, I guess. But anyway, moving further back, we've got this nice little round gangway that terminates in a curved round bench that goes around the whole rear end of the hull. Uh, if the ship was actually powered on, you'd be able to see the rear automated turret stick out there. Oh, now I'm standing on table. Oh, 
Oh, hey, you can sit here. Nice. Oh, wow. That is a great view. Really is a nice view. Oh, there's another seat over here. Wait, and it's even recessed? What? Okay. I don't understand why, but okay. What was that? Okay, I don't know if sitting in here just did something, or if that was just one of the random sound effects that quite often plays. But anyhow, carrying on, you come down this area here, and you have, I guess you could say the recreation quarters, or recreational room. Got a couple of chairs you can sit in here, so you can watch some TV while you're traveling, I suppose. Like if you were a passenger or something, obviously the crew would have stuff to do. Going back here, we've got a couple more seats. Pool table. Oh hey, you can see outside from up there. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Because that looks pretty solid. So that must be a bug. But yeah, anyway. Carrying on, like I said, you gotta small pool table, I look for people have a game in the pool. Ooh. Damn it, I did it again. I think I agree with tactical advance. I need to put something on these windows. <laughs> I really hope they don't, but I think they should. <laughs> like just move that logo to stretch across the middle or something, you know? But anyhow, carrying on. We've got a fairly decent kitchenette. The seats three. Really nice, I don't know, <coughs> marble? Yeah, I'd say that's some kind of marble for a table. Or a granite wall on the back. Granite wall next to the uh, fridge. Yeah, it must be, because that's a nice dispenser. Yeah. And then, then, yeah, you got a small wine rack. Not sure what that is. Oh, shitload of food supplies. Ketchup, mustard. Some sort of fresh herbs. A bowl of watermelon and a really looking weird looking strawberry and... I don't know what the hell that little thing is. <laughs> don't know what those are supposed to do, but you got a few shelves for dishes or something, I guess. And then moving back here, we've got more of those cargo plates. For uh, personal storage, I'm assuming. Like for passengers and that. And then if we move back here, we have the engineering station, or at least one of them. Uh, let's see, this would be on the left-hand side. And then, yeah, apparently somehow if you get lucky... Oh, there it is. Ha! You have a major component housing deal here. Unfortunately, it seems to be missing, but... Yeah. And then I think you get another one back here. Yeah, you do. And it too is missing. As you can see. Now I'm sure that'll be rectified in the future here. It just, uh blank template kind of thing. And then uh, a lot of people have 
So the idea around that these things here will slide out like a drawer and then you access them from the side. And I do actually agree with that theory quite well actually. Either that or the door will pop up and then slide to the side. But I think them sliding straight out like a drawer would make more sense. But coming out from here, we have a another copy of said rooms back here. And then to carry on, we have to come back to the back and then work our way back up to the top deck from the bottom deck. And then carry on to the front. As we're coming through here, this way, we get the elevator and staircase leading to it that we use to get up here. And off to our right, we have a suit and armor storage, and yeah, it looks like you get four of them. Yeah, a weapon and armory, suit and storage, suit and armor, suit and armor, yeah. So that would be basically your armory. And then moving down the stairs and forward some more, we get the uh, module room. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this is the Explorer variant, because I think on the touring model this should be like a luxury suite. Again, I could be wrong. Apparently the UI isn't working on this seat. So we'll just hop out of it. But yeah, then, uh, like I said, you can look down into the rover and cargo bay. You get like a holographic map of, I'm hoping, whatever people are scanning on there. And, uh, was that an asteroid that just floated through the floor? Okay. Ah, PT, spugs and all. But yeah, no, this is glass, so you can walk right on and in and through this fancy little globe. Crouch down, pretend you're Atlas. Or try to. And, uh, yeah, anyway, moving forward some more, we have the, uh, main elevator that brought us back into the ship. Off to this side, we have three escape pods for the cockpit crew. And moving up here, we have the actual cockpit. And, uh, honestly, it's kind of spartan. But I suppose that works with the whole clean lines and everything, but the lighting in here makes it look very, mm, I don't know, clinical, for lack of a better term. But, uh, I don't know if we hop in one of the support seats here. Originally, I thought these were like your co-pilot pilot seat, but it turns out, no, they are, uh, oh, it's not going to let me, okay. Uh, they are the remote turret uh, access points. But I guess we're going to have to pop in the pilot seat and turn this beast on before we can check out the turrets. So, rather than just uh, get in a hurry here, just because quite often it's very rewarding to do this separately, we will power on first. Origin shipboards at your service. Core system operational. Okay. And then we'll wait for the shields to boot up, and then we will turn on the engines. Because as I learned when I first got the Caterpillar, when it was flight ready, sometimes the engine startup can be very satisfying. Alright, now, engine 
on. Engines inactive. Ah. Well, that's what they sound like when they die. Now let's hear what they sound like when they boot up. Engines active. Now, personally, I think I like the Caterpillar better just because it's got a deeper, more industrial thrum to it. But, with this being a luxury yacht, or I don't know if you can call it a yacht, but luxury ship anyway. I suppose it would make sense for it to be fairly quiet. Alright, well, let's try this remote turret seat again. There we go. So yeah, you get the basic generic menu. You know, comms, heat, power, weapons, that kind of thing. Actually, you know what? Just for curiosity, what do we get? Alright, so that would be for the turret, and it's not going to give us any missiles because we don't get missiles, which makes sense. Alright, so, now to begin with, I thought it was just a point and shoot sort of thing, but no, it turns out you, uh, what was that? Oh, that's got a very long activation, but anyway, you go down there, and, uh, yeah. I don't know why the guns are sh actually shooting here, but... Yeah, they should be shooting. So, we'll try the, uh, second seat here and see if maybe it works. Seat off to the left, it would seem with the. Oh, I always forget the name. Dorsal turret, the one on the bottom. Yeah, no, that's not working right. Anyhow, uh, that one is the bottom turret, and the one on the right would be the upper rear turret. And, uh,. Yeah, we will take a quick hop in the pilot seat here. And apparently my main guns aren't working either. Hmm. That is odd. is indeed very odd. But anyway, it's basically got the exact same weapons as the uh, Constellation line, except it only gets three rather than four. And I mean, maneuverability-wise, it's not the greatest, but then again, it's a fair-sized ship, so you wouldn't really expect it to go break dancing. But otherwise, it's not too, too bad. Not the fastest thing. Not gonna win any drag races or anything, but... It's good enough for what it needs to do, I suppose. Which is basically just go cruising around. And find pretty views. very much like this. And I mean, to be fair, 
Who could really argue with waking up to a view? Much like the one I am about to show. You know, if you got rid of all the wood and the stone, this ship would remind me of a cross between the Normandy and the Tempest. But oh, I mean, could you just imagine waking up to that for a view in the morning? That would be fucking epic. No doubts about it. But anywho, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, this is Stone Leprechaun, signing off.